Hey everyone, I'm Tech Pine and welcome to Prismata. What is Prismata, you ask? I like to call it a single and multiplayer turn-based strategy and tactics game with no random element. It's gonna enter Steam Early Access on the 8th of March, and this is what it looks like. So in this game, your goal is to destroy all enemy units, and you do so by building your own units, which will either pr produce resources, which allows you to build more powerful units, or um, allows you to attack the other units and destroy them and win the game. Okay, so this is how a match regularly starts. You start with two engineers and six or seven drones, depending on if you're the starting player or not. In this case, the uh, AI started, which is an expert board, which is not the highest difficulty, but it's pretty good already. It will probably beat me because I'm not very good at the game, <laughs> but we will see. Who knows? Um, and uh, well, it's my turn now. The bot started by building, building two drones. Drones are your regular um, well, economy unit that produce gold. There are five resources in this game. Let's, uh, let's read the tooltips really quick because the tooltips of the game are actually very Helpful. Everything has tooltips and they are pretty good, uh, pretty good written. So let's just go over the resources really quick. Gold and ghost side are stored at the end of your turn, and uh, bohemium replicates and energy are discarded at the end of your turn. So engineers produce energy uh, at the start of the turn. So having two engin engineers means you have two energy available per turn. While drones can be clicked to produce gold, and this gold will not be discarded at the end of the turn. So if I don't use it, I will have it available next turn. And um, the first few units you can see over here are the economy units. There's the engineer and the drone, and then um, the conduit, which produces the the green the go side, um, the blast forge, which, which produces bohemian or what's it called, bohemian, and uh, the animus, which produces two um, two of the red energy. I, I can't re I can't <laughs> um, remember the names. Replicate. I, I I always forget it. Doesn't matter. Red energy, whatever. Okay. So um, as you can see, we have a bunch of units available over here. Um, these are the regular units which will which are available in every match while those five over here are random So in every match you have five random units available and uh, those are the same for your opponent So you, there's um, there's basically two things random in this game the the random units at the begin which determine how the well, determine the rules of the match basically because other units available obviously changes the available tactics and strategies and then who starts the match. After that, there's no random element in the game whatsoever. So everything is, well, can be calculated basically, which means the AI is pretty good in this game. <laughs> so uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I will probably, probably lose. So I will do the same as the AI did and buy two drones and then end my turn. The game is very heavily keyboard focused. You can play everything with the mouse, but you can do almost everything with uh, shortcuts, which is really good. Good, and you can also rebind all of those shortcuts. So that's that's really nice. You can, uh, for example, you can click those drones, um, and that's that's the only thing you have to do with the mouse is clicking units actually. Um, but for drones, there's an exception. If I want to activate all drones, I can just press Q, and that will trigger all drones because that's a very common move. Obviously, you want to we want all your drones to produce energy, not all the time, uh, gold, not energy, um, but most of the time. Okay, so he did build more drones. Um, I will probably do the same. Uh, however, I have four gold left afterwards, so I can afford building a conduit as well. Yeah, let's, let's go for that and see where it leads me. Um, okay, so yeah, units have very different, well, not very, well, they, they, you, they work very differently, but we will, we will go over the units when we, when we play them. Uh, let's not rush anything here. So he built, he did build a blast forge, which allows him to build units which require bohemian. Or the blue energy, which are usually defensive units. Not all of them, though. Uh, the, the steel splitter is a defensive unit, but can also attack. But he cannot do both at the same time. Um, so I have a bunch of gold and one gold side now. I will continue producing drones, I think. Um, which means I will not use the gold side now, but it will not be discarded, so that's not a problem. I can use it next turn if I want to, or I just save it up for the Xatron, which is a pretty uni a pretty useful unit as well. I think what I want to do, however, is building a Blast Forge now, because that allows me to get some defensive units um, next turn if I have to, um, because the opponent is capable of building a sp Steel Splitter, and there he goes. Uh, so he builds a Steel Splitter now, that's the first offensive unit on the field, um, which means he can deal up to one damage next turn. This is the damage potential for uh, your opponent's next turn, which you can see here, and that's an important number, because you usually want to be able to defend that. Um, but we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment. So let's activate the drones. And um, I guess we build the defensive units. And I'm really thinking about uh, the poly wall here. It's a pretty nice unit. It's very expensive, though, for 10 gold. Um, it, it will last me for a long time, however, uh, because it's 6 health. And those will, not, uh, those will regenerate every turn. So that will keep, um, keep me the enemy of my... Uh, but for a few turns, I could ex um, I could alternatively build a wall, but that has only three HP, so that will be overrun in a few turns. 
Potentially next turn, I guess. Um, hmm, I think I go for the Poly Wall. Let's try that. I never played uh, with that unit, so let's let's experiment with it. And on top of that, I will build another drone to boost my economy a little bit. And now I really want to start building some offensive units as well, though. Well, maybe maybe I go for an Animus first, so I can actually build red units, because those are a little bit better in offense, usually, than the blue ones. Okay, so what did he do? He did build a Ghost Charge, really? Okay. Um, that was That's a weird move. That's actually... A, that's actually really dumb, I think. That doesn't help him whatsoever. That's actually a blatant mistake the AI does. Oh, did. Um... It, you will see it will not deal any damage um, next turn, but um, th that surprises me. I'm, I'm a little stuck here because it surprised me because the AI usually doesn't do those obvious mistakes. At least so far it didn't. So either I'm missing something or the AI did a mistake there, which is which is an exception. The AI is pretty good, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm a little surprised about that move. But anyway, let's continue. So I have a bunch of gold. Uh, let's build more drones. And now... I could either build some offensive units, which would force him to keep his steel splitter at bay, so he can use it uh, to defend, um, which is not beneficial to me because uh, I will block the steel splitter anyway. So I guess instead I go for an animus and try to get some uh, some uh, some of that replicas to uh, get some offensive units. I'm, I'm looking for shadow fangs or tarsiers here. Which are both quite nice. Probably Tarsiers. Probably we'll probably start with Tarsiers. I could I could get another engineer. I have two gold left, which allow which would allow me to build more drones per turn. I'm not sure that's worth it right now. I'm I'm in a pretty good defensive position, but I don't want to drag it out too long. I I have to start building offensive units at some point. Um, I think we stick to the two drones per turn um, for now. So let's end the turn here. I could get Ghost Charges. That's, that's not helping. Force field, neither. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's end the turn and see what he does. So now the Gauss charge exploded. It's a it's a one turn trick thingy basically. It's it, it's uh, at the start of your turn gain one attack and sacrifice the Gauss charge. So we now see that the enemy has actually one attack and attacks me with that. And now I have to um, assign defenders. So unit that have units that have this this blocker symbol up here are capable of blocking, um, which means I can assign them as a blocker and can. Uh, can uh, defend, uh, can fend off the damage, and um, there are two different types of health for the units. There are those plus health units, uh, like the poly wall, the blue units usually, and then there are the green units most of the time, which have um, those um, hearts as health. So this unit has four hearts, and um, the difference is that the the, bl the blue or the plus health will restore after the end of turn. So if I just do this, it will absorb the one damage and just regenerate afterwards, while the units with the hearts as health will um, well keep the damage. And not regenerate. So we uh, assign the poly wall as a defender, and this ghost charge goes nowhere. I'm not sure why he did that. That was a really weird move. Okay, um, and now I can build some offense, and I think I want to do that. Let's just put some pressure on by building some Tarsus. Not not like it's not pressure immediately because those Tarsus have a build time of two, but they will start dealing damage afterwards. So that will be useful, and I can build two of them every turn, which is pretty sweet. And we might be able to build Xeotron soon as well, which is um, also a defensive unit, though. I don't need that right now. What was this Antima Comet again? What he built? Uh, build time of two turns, start of a turn, gain one damage for each engineer. So I imagine he will start building em uh, engineers now, because right now that's not very useful. So he might spam some engineers now. Uh, can he do that? Well, he can, yeah, obviously. Engineers are cheap. So maybe I want to build something else than Tarsius, actually, because some damage next time would be useful to reduce his engineer so he can't uh, breach my poly wall. Uh, so instead of going for Tarsius, I could build... I could build some Ghost Charges. Not the worst idea ever. Alternatively, I could go for some Rhinos. Um, those also deal one damage, but um, they have stamina too, so I can only use them twice for attacking. Uh... Meh, 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 meh. Or we build some Gauss Cannons. Maybe we just do that. Maybe we just do that. I, I think we... Yeah, I... I let's do that. Let's let's do that. Just Let's just build some Gauss Cannons. Those will be available next turn so I can um, shoot some Engineers and uh, see what happens. Um, we're wasting a bunch of resources here, but yeah. So let's see what he does. He didn't really build any Engineers. Well, one. That surprises me. The AI plays weird this time. Okay, maybe I have a chance of winning. <laughs> um, not sure what that is. The, the last two matches I played against Expert Ball, I, I lost horribly. So, um, yeah, okay. 
Um, I will deal some damage this turn. He has a brutal damage potential for next turn, obviously, um, because of the Comet, which will deal three damage if I don't kill the Engineers, which I will, though. So that will be reduced by two. Um, the Ghost Judge will deal one damage, and one of the Tarsus will be ready. So potentially the Steel Spit as well. So one... Oh, will I kill it? Oh, I did a mistake, didn't I? Yeah, I forgot the Steel Spit. I will not destroy any Engineers. Ah, God damn it. Um, okay, that was a mistake. That was dumb. So I will probably take those seven hits, um, which means uh, I want to defend against that. Could build the Xandron. Uh, he will destroy the Poly Wall. Hmm. The problem with the Poly Wall is that it is a frontline unit, so he can attack it before I assign my blockers. Ah, uh, God damn it! I screwed that up completely. God damn it! That that annoys me. That annoys me greatly now. I completely screwed that up. Um, okay, so. Let's try to adjust to that, though. So I will lose my Poly Wall next turn, so I need some defensive units uh, next turn. Uh, which means I need... Um, I want the Xeotron be ready. So let's build another Conduit, so I have five uh, Gauss next turn. Gauss side. Uh, so I can build him. Um, and now I... I don't need to build defensive units now. I will survive this turn. Would be useful to have them around for next turn, though. So... Is the, is the poly wallet good? Is, is, is it money inefficient? It costs 10 and gives 6 health, while the regular wall costs 5 and gives 3 health, so that's fine. It costs obviously less uh, Bohemian to build those. Uh, all the units have a limited supply, but if you see those little blue dots here, that's how many times you can buy them. So we're gonna run out of drones at some point. Uh, oh god, that's a hard choice. Do I really wanna. What do I wanna do now? I could build more offense. He's starting to overpower me at some point. Could build some offense. Um, I really hate that I did build those Gauss Cannons. That was just a waste of of, uh, of Gussite, basically. I could have built some two Tarsiers instead. That would have been basically the same effect. Um, I think I want to build another... another Wait, how much health does the, the Xeratron start with? Four. And uh, additionally, I can build probably one wall. Maybe a poly wall, actually. Poly wall would be 10 health, plus one engineer would be 11. Uh, his damage output would be lower next turn. I should be fine with the Xeratron and whatever I build next turn. So let's build some offensive units. Okay, let's go for the Tarsiers now, I assume. Probably makes sense. Build some drones as well. And yeah, we roll with that. Let's see if that works out. So my two damage will just be absorbed by the steel splitter. And now he attacks the frontline unit, as you can see there, and uh, kills one of my engineers now, which I assign as a blocker. If your deep all your blockers get overrun, then the enemy starts assigning the damage. So you really want to uh, to have enough blockers available because that means you can control where the damage goes and uh, potentially absorb damage as well. While if um, the enemy overruns your defenders, which we will see at some point in this match, uh, he's well, he's the one assigning the damage, so... Okay, we take 7 damage next turn, so if we have a Xeotron here and build one defensive unit, like a wall, we should be fine. We will lose this wall, but that's fine. So the Xeotron... Um, uh, okay, so two things. First of all, there's this uh, prompt ability. Without the prompt, units you build this turn will not be able to block. Um, but when they have the prompt, well, only units that have the blocker ability can block. But they can only do that if they're not getting, uh, if, they're, if they have, haven't been built this turn. Or, well, if they're ready, if they're, if they're finished, obviously. If you build a unit, it will take, it will only be finished after you defend. So um, they will not be available uh, in the first turn. Except if they have the prompt ability. So this is, um, those two units are available from defending this turn already. So that's useful. And um, yeah, we're gonna do that and then probably boost our offense more by more with building more Tarsiers. I hope that works out. I'm a little scared to be honest. Not sure if this is gonna work, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, end of turn. My damage is getting absorbed again. Now he builds a poly wall as well. That sucks because I don't have enough damage 
to destroy it. And now I have to s assign seven damage. We do exactly that. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't talk about the Xeotron yet. So at the start of the turn, it regenerates health, um, which means it took some damage now, but it also healed it. Um, and it, as I mentioned earlier, it has the, the hard health, so it will not automatically refresh the health, but it heals per, four per turn because that's this unit's ability. So that's what happened here. Uh, drones can block as well if you don't click them, as you can see. It gives defensive points. Um, usually want to click them though and get your defense somewhere else. So we could build another poly wall here, uh, which is an efficient way of getting uh, getting that uh, those defensive points. So we might just do that and build Tarsiers. More drones? Oh, I don't have any engineers left, never mind. We probably want to build one in that case. I have a feeling I'm getting overpowered here fairly soon. I uh, don't see a way of changing that though. Can't, can't really do much about it right now. I kind of screwed up the, the beginning of the game, I guess. Which is a pain in the arse. Uh, still not enough damage next turn. Blah. Should have built a ghost charge. Yeah, that was dumb. Should have built a ghost charge. I should have done the math. I'm, I'm playing really badly here. Well, um, let's assign the damage to Xeotron, which regenerates. And uh, then, um, yeah. We could click it to get a bunch of ghost charges, which is not helping. Uh, we'll build another poly wall, I guess. And we basically, well, we can build some drones now. Or one, that is. And more Tarsiers. So next turn we should have enough damage to breach the wall, right? Right? Yeah, two Tarsiers getting ready. That should be seven damage. That should be enough. Uh, do I want to build another engineer here? Mm, not necessarily. Let's not do that for now. So, yeah. This is not looking good. I'm probably going to lose this. But you see how the, how the game um, works. So He's not... Wait, why is he dealing so few damage? Oh, because he destroyed the poly wall already. Obviously, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, okay, so this turn I'm capable of killing the poly wall. Um, also have to defend against 13 damage though. I can do that by building another poly wall though. But I'm, I'm gonna run out of poly walls at some point. So that might get in just... I think I am in the economy lead though. I have 21 rounds and he has 19. Um, he has a few more resources than I have, but that shouldn't be the, bad, uh, the big factor here. Um, He's building a lot of offense there, which means I have to spend a lot of resources on my defense, which annoys me. But, uh, what are you gonna do? Okay, drone supplies running low, Tarsier supplies running low, which means we have a lot of Tarsiers on the board, which is good. Um, should spend those Gaussites at some point. I could get some Gauss charges. It's not really gonna help me next turn though, I think. How much damage do we deal next turn? Eight plus potentially three gauss charges, that would be 11. The poly wall will be down. He can build a new one, obviously. Yes. I don't think it's worth to go for gauss charges right now. I think I saved the gauss side. Well, for what though? I have to build him at some point. I have to build him at some point. I don't really need the gold next turn, I think. Let's do that. It forces to uh, forces him to spend some resources on uh, on the defensive, of defensive on defensive units potentially. Okay, so um, as you can see, this is highlighted because it's a frontline unit, so we can assign damage before he assigns blockers. So we can assign six damage here, then end the turn, uh, which will then result in him uh, assigning one point of damage to the wall, which absorbs that. He destroys my poly wall, and I have to consume, phew, absorb another seven damage. So now our Xatron starts to die soonish, which is a problem. Um, but yeah, not much I can do about that. So uh, we build another poly wall. Is that enough? That's not quite enough. Oh, I should have built another blast forge. I forgot about that. Kind of running out of Bohemian. A baby Bohemian? Bohemian. Kind of forgot about that. To be honest, I missed that. Mm. Because now I don't have enough Bohemian to build enough defensive ones. So I guess you build either build a Rhino or a Force Field. A Force Field consumes a drone. But it's a pretty cheap way of getting defensive defense. 
to defensive points. Um, the Rhine also gives two defensive points. It's way more expensive though, but it doesn't cost a drone. Um, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Wait, I could afford a drone. He's getting, he's getting there though as well. Not really ahead anymore when it comes to economy. So, yeah, killing a drone will produce problems in the long run. Killing the rhino is more problematic short term. And short term, I'm probably fine. Well, does it allow me to build a blast watch? That's, a, that's the important question, I guess. Uh, it, it does. But then I'm completely out of options, basically. Um, let's build more Goth Charges and hope the pressure helps. We'll see. Probably not. As I mentioned, I probably lose that because of some early mistakes. That's actually a thing I noticed in this game. If you do something early on, it, it might cost you the game. If you do a mistake early on, that might cost you the game later on. Um, I assume that on a high level of like on a high competitive level, there will be a lot of four fates um, at some point. I would I would imagine that to be the case. So we ex uh, we sacrifice the rhino so the Xeotrin doesn't die, so he can regenerate four health. Um, there we go. And now we have twelve damage, which allows us to kill the two polywalls. Yeah, there's no point in not doing that. Um, and now I need a lot of defensive units. Let's start with the poly wall. I could go for two poly walls. But it costs a lot of gold, but it works. It does the job. And it keeps Xeratron alive, I think. So, does it? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, it does, but the engineer dies. Um, yeah, still probably the best move. Which means I'm probably screwed next turn. But <laughs> we'll find about that. Find out about that next turn. Um, the question is, do I want to build an engineer now? It probably doesn't really help. Uh, we'll be screwed at some point anyway. Well, we need the gold for the engineer though. I'm running out of options here. Um, let's build the engineer. That's not the engineer. What did I build? Ghost side. No, ghost side. Ghost charge. Now let's build an engineer, and hope that helps. So. Yeah, he has way more damage than me. Regular damage, that is. And that's uh, definitely a problem here. Um, so, another pulley wall. Pulley walls are running low. So we can still buy two, though. And... I guess ghost chargers for more offense. As long as we still can do that. A pretty cheap way of getting offense as long as you have enough goal side, so it kind of works. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Oh, I should should assign damage to the pulley wall, and then I probably kill a few units. He sacrificed a drone. Okay, that's good. That's definitely useful. And he starts building force fields. Okay, that's good. Force fields means he I sacrificed drone, so I'm kind of. Kind of on the winning side right now, at least for for a few turns. That might turn around at some point, though. Especially because I'm running out of poly walls. That would probably break my neck, I assume. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. So now I'm out of poly walls, which means I have to fall back to regular walls. Still okay, though. Still okay. I could sacrifice one drone for a force field or get a rhino. Um... Uh, Thinking about going the short-term solution now, in the hopes of turning this around. So let's let's get a force field, and then let's try to get a blowing charge. Let's try to break his offense, uh, his defense next turn by getting a lot of ghost charges. That might have been a mistake. We will see. <laughs> that might work or not. I don't know. Um, stop. Assign damage to the poly wall, and. Let him assign the rest of the damage. That will destroy another drone. I'm surprised he's not actually building... Oh, no, he's building fosters, right. Okay, so... Uh, I take 10 damage here. Um, 
So I have to get it down to five to keep the Xatron alive. So I sacrifice those two, keep the Xatron alive and end the defense. I have 16 damage and I'm not breaching his offense, but he's sacrificing a lot of drones to get force fields. So that's good. Uh, and he's running out of goal side next turn. So we might be, we might have something here. Problem is that I'm running out of defense now. That kind of works. Um, running out of goal side now though. So, mm -hmm. what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do, do I build another conduit, another drone or engineer or do I save the money? Drone doesn't seem useful right now, so let's not do that. I could build get another tars Tarsier, but that that's too late, that takes two more turns until it does something. Not a big fan of that right now. Same goes for the producing units though. Let's go for the, we could save up the money and see what we get next turn. Like the thing is, no, I, I will, run off, rep, will run out of replicates next turn, probably because I need to build Rhinos to defend. So yeah, let's use the replicates or it will be wasted. Let's go for another Tarsier and hope that it helps me in two turns. Um, okay, so sign damage to the party wall. And let him assign the rest of the 10 damage. That's another drone and four force fields down. So it does another drone down. Um, okay, that's good. But I'm definitely running into problems now. Right now, Xero drone. Yeah, I'm not doing that much damage now. I think I'm losing. I think I'm losing. Actually, I don't run out of replicates as long as I use force fields. Well, next turn I will still, yeah, I still need the next turn. We could go for one more Tarsier. Uh, doesn't, not enough gold, not enough gold. Would like to use the other replicates, but I don't see a way of doing that. Um. Well, let's see if that does anything. I have more drones than him right now, right? 17 to 14, yes. He just got four ghost charges. That will probably break my neck. Um, okay. Should have built some engineers. I forgot about that. That was probably a mistake. That was probably, he's not built, yeah. I'm running out of damage here. Ah, God damn it. I feel that would happen. Okay. Walls, rhinos, I'm still low on damage. So instead of rhinos, we go force fields and rhinos, I guess. And I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm screwed, I'm screwed. So he will start overrunning me now and I don't think I can turn this around. I don't see a way of doing that whatsoever. Um, I could try getting enough damage to overrun him next turn, but uh, I don't see that happening. Um, I don't see how that helps. Let's try, but I don't see how that helps. Um, okay, so we deal some damage, which he will just absorb with the rhinos and the engineers. And now he's overrunning me, and as you can see, he, he chooses targets to attack now, and that breaks my neck. And you just build another poly wall, which eats most of my damage. And then he sacrificed the other Rhino, which is out of charges anyway. And I knew he probably sacrificed the drone, but that doesn't help me. That doesn't help me. Um, I'm just screwed now. Yeah, yeah, this is done. Um, yeah, there's no coming back from this. I'm pretty sure. Well, my prediction, we're right. <laughs> I got my ass handed. I think I could have won that if I didn't do one big mistake in the, uh, in the early game, though. That might have been the one turn that breaks my neck now, which is a little unfortunate. 
Um, let's just run it through, shall we? I'm just gonna keep space press or spam space. Um, not gonna win this, so just let him finish me off. I could forfeit, obviously, but I wanna show you how the camp match ends. There we go. Determining the optimal strategy. Well, the that optimal strategy is to press and turn and assign damage. There we go, defeat. Okay, so expert bot did beat me. Um, I think I had a chance of winning. He did some stupid mistakes early, early, early on as well, but I did, uh, did, dig, I did bigger mistakes I, uh, than him. Um, uh, as you can see, there's also a master bot and a master and another master bot, <laughs> an even stronger master bot apparently. So um, yeah, so so that's quick play. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the game has single player and multiplayer. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, let's talk about the single player first, shall we? So there's the campaign. Um, the campaign. Oh, ignore that. That will not be in the release version, obviously. Six. Uh, what's the password? I think. There we go. Okay, so the campaign consists of five episodes. However, only one of them is implemented right now. Um, the game will enter in early access and is supposed to be in early access for five months. And those five other four episodes are supposed to um, release during that time. So the game is supposed to la fully launch or fully release with five episodes. The first episode consists of eight missions and one bonus mission. So you have missions here. There you have some story going on with different characters, um, which are yeah, uh, which is kind of well well written. I think um, it was kind of. Um, enjoyable to, to read through. Um, the characters talk during the matches and before and after the matches. It's that didn't got like, they don't have super lengthy dialogue, so it, it did go by fast. Um, as I said, it was pleasant to read. Um, and those missions also work as a tutorial. And if you beat all the missions of this epi of one episode, you um, unlock expert challenges. So if I click on the mission ex again, I can play it an expert challenge, which will put an extra difficulty on it by either well, f uh, by giving the opponent a big advantage or giving you a strict turn limit or something along those lines. And if you beat all the expert ma uh, expert challenges, then you unlock a bonus mission down here. Well, not all of them actually. I only need to beat four expert medals to unlock this extra mission down here. Uh, I didn't try that yet because the game actually recommends to do something else before that because those expert challenges are actually pretty hard. It recommends to you to play th through the combat training. The combat training is the meat of the single player right now. Um, it's, uh, I think, six, yeah, six packs of missions. Um, the first th uh, three had nine missions. Um, the, the next two have 11 and then one down here with seven challenges. And all of those are, well, m not necessarily full-fledged matches. Some of them are just like uh, puzzles. Um, this, for example, is a setup puzzle. Um, it just starts like this. Uh, oops. Ah, wrong buttons pressing the wrong buttons. Um, this is, a pro however, a regular match. Uh, it, it just didn't start at the beginning, but if we leave this, I think the next one might be the one I'm looking for. No, neither. Which one was it? Sorry, should have looked that up before. Uh, probably this one. Yeah, there we go. This is like a puzzle. You have a certain situation going on here and you have to figure out how to beat it. Um, and fulfill the mission objectives, which in this case is eliminate, el eliminate uh, this unit. Um, uh, so um, there are full-fledged matches here, there are those puzzle matches. Uh, overall, there's a lot of content here, and uh, it's pretty challenging. The AI is pretty good, um, they're set up, the, the difficulty curve is pretty good as well, like the, these challenges are set up in a, in a good order, I think, and that works out pretty well. And I had, had a lot of fun playing those all, so far, I played it for a few hours already. Um, that was pretty fun, so I enjoyed that. So there's a lot of single-player content here already. There will be more on release, so that's pretty good because the game is obviously kind of multiplayer-focused. It's a it's a one v one competitive um, um, turn-based well one v one competitive game, which means the focus is obviously somewhat on multiplayer. And uh, but but for an indie game, it's usually hard to get a player base, especially because this game is not supposed to go free to play. Um, so uh, I think it's very, very good that the developers decide to put a good meat of single player content in here. So you can potentially just buy this for a single player and have some, uh, have a few hours of fun with that. Um, so I think that's a pretty good decision. I'm not quite sure why the unit blueprints button is here. That's not really playable content. Uh, what this is, um, basically those are the units you unlocked. So while you level up your account, account levels down here, which you do by playing, well, challenges, campaign, uh, or uh, multiplayer matches, um, you unlock uh, those blueprints, and this means that in the in the regular matches, like in the in the casual or ranked matches against other players, those blueprints will be available for you to play um, as the extra units 
um, of, uh, of this, yeah, those just random extra units. And uh, yeah, that's 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 the progression system to get here, which is, I think, good because it means that it introduces concepts to you gradually and doesn't throw everything at you. So before before you unlock the frostbite, um, there is no chill in the game, for example. And the frostbite introduces a new mechanic, chill, uh, which is not there before that. And other units can do the same thing. So you can put more advanced units with more complex concepts later down here, and that allows players to to learn those mechanics. Uh, uh, on the go while still having the full game experience uh, with the earlier blueprints, which is pretty cool, I think. Like it, it, it holds off concept without really restricting the game. It's still, it's still a valid match. It just decided to choose um, those five random units from the basic units instead of having uh, some some more complex units. So, so it's a pretty good way of having having yeah those those def difficulty curve increase over time. Um, pretty good idea, I think. Okay, besides the single player content, uh, we have quick, well, there's more single player here if you play against bots. Obviously, quick players against bots. So you can see here there are different um, difficulty levels. You can also set up a lot of different things here if you choose versus computer. There's a lot of different options to customize your game. You can uh, choose who starts first. Um, then there are more options over here. Um, you can have gold handicap and, and other things. Um, you can uh, change the, the loadout, obviously, so which cards are available. Um, also, a neat feature is here you can load that from replay you don't load a, a save state what you load is the loadout so if i go to watch um i can choose one of my my matches so the one we just played for example and i can say copy the code and go to battle um with computer load from reply put in the code here and um that will load the exact units we had available in that one match so that's a pretty good feature. Uh, you can also just use custom and select whatever you like. Um, there are also uh, rules where you can have more than just five random units, where you have like 20 units available in total or something along those lines and stuff like that. So you can do that as well. So that there's a lot of options here. That's pretty good. In general, the game is full of options, which is one of the biggest strengths of this game. It's super customizable, a lot of options, and uh, it's pretty well done as well. Like there are hotkeys for everything, tool tips for everything, stuff like that. The UI is a little classic, uh, little, little cluttered and doesn't look quite good but it works like there's everything here it's just and if you find it <laughs> it, it works um, as you would expect as well but it, it doesn't look great and it could be a little bit less cluttered I guess but it, it works it, it everything is there so that's the, the main important thing here um, casual match is uh, basically matchmaking, but it can also match you against uh, bots. You can, however, ch change the likelihood of that happening. So you can say, I want to, you want to play against humans and put the slider here. Obviously, right now, that's a terrible idea because there are not many people online right now because the game is not released yet. But um, if this game gets a player base, then you can play casually against other human players here. And I think this sliders changes... Um, like, if you put the slider here then it will put a focus on players that have the same amount of or at least the same amount of blueprints unlocked as you so you have uh can have all the units available that you have unlocked in in your match um while this one will focus more on matchmaking i'm not 100 sure however there's actually a tooltip missing here that explains the slider unfortunately one of the points where we have no proper tooltip um then there's also ranked play which i just unlocked at level 20 you can't play that before that and um yeah that it's it's ranked with seasons and stuff like that and uh lots of settings again as you can see here <laughs> so there's lots of things to do um if you play casual before you play ranked it tells you here actually um uh, casual matches games are unranked, but players with more casual match victories will require fewer ranked play victories to ascend through the ranked play tier system. So you can start by playing casual and then go to ranked and not not, not all your casual matches are completely uh, pointless. That will help you while playing ranked. You can play against friends, obviously, and there's a leaderboard which is empty right now because no players and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> um, then there are events, which is a cool idea. Basically, it's um, special times where certain events available um, which uh, have certain rules so there's mini tournaments basically with certain rules like which change the game again around so they have uh, 12 base plus a i'm not sure what this all means but portpourri whatever that is enjoy diverse blend of un unusual prismata modes from past mode of the week okay so that's even more random so special rule sets basically for a limited amount of time um, which you can join if you want so that's pretty good um then i, I showed you the replay thing already you can uh, rewatch replay i think you can even Let's let's try it. I think you can even jump in and continue playing. Um, so I never tried that. But I, I think you can do that. 
So we can skip a few turns. Now I think you can jump in. Is that the button? No. Uh, what did I do? I confuse this with a different game. I might confuse this with a different game. I, I might confuse this. Um, I thought it was possible, but that might have been a different game. Okay, anyway. That would be a good option to include, though. Continue to continue playing replays. Um, okay, so... Okay, let's talk about the business model. Because that's a big uh, the big problem I have with the game. The business model is based on random loot boxes. Which is ironic, because the game features, or is so heavily focused on not having, or and having as few random elements as possible. But the, the, the freaking business model is based on loot boxes. It's not exactly loot boxes, but it, it's the same deal, basically. So, first of all, keep in mind, this game is not free-to-play and is never supposed to become free-to-play. It might eventually, because at some point, probably the player base dries out and then the devs might decide to go free-to-play, but right now, uh, that's not the plan. So, the game will have a purchase price. On top of that, there is a, a cosmetic progression, or not progression, what kind of progression system? It has a cos cosmetic customized set system. Um, you have skins for your units, which change how your units look, uh, which is pretty neat, I think. So I have this drone, which is uh, not a regular drone. So if, if we look at the drones, usually your drones look like this, my drones look like this. This is a cool feature. There's lots of skins here for all the units. Um, some of them look a little, a little bit silly. Some of them are pretty cool. Um, so there are a lot of, lot of different skins, as you can see here, for all the units or almost all the units. And um, there are also emotes, uh, which you can use in multiplayer battles. And um, then there are, uh, what was this one thing about again? I, 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 I forgot what those are for. Uh, oh yeah, you can upgrade emotes with that. Right, you can change the color and stuff like that. So those, this is a consumable item, which you can also get through the loot box system, which allows you to change those emotes even more. So you can change the background color or, or whatever, or the frame. Um, so that's kind of a cute feature as well. So there are a lot of options here as well. Then there are badges and avatars, which uh, can only... But basically they work as achievements. Um, badges can be shown here and your avatar over here, obviously. And uh, they, they just should get, work as achievements. You can't get them through the loadbox system. Okay, let's talk about the loadbox system. The loot box system is a little weird um, because, first of all, you can't buy those loot boxes or what they're called power cores and omni power cores. You can't buy them directly. Well, you can, but not like I want to buy one now and that costs so much dollar. You can't do that. What you can do is you can either uh, acquire those those fragments by playing the game, or um, you can uh, buy uh, those bundles, which will have power cores available as well. Um, so you can get a few power cords here. Besides that, you cannot buy them directly. What you can buy are shards. And what shards do, uh, let's just demonstrate. So we use a power core, put it in here. And now we have basically a loot box open, which gives us those uh, items. But we it doesn't give us all of those items. It just gives us a chance on all of those items. So we have a, an emote here, a bunch of skins. Um, and then I think this is another emote. Yeah, it's an, an animated emote. Uh, yeah, wrong emote. So two emotes and a bunch of skins over here. And this one is a pretty rare skin, a mythic skin, and uh, those are epic. And uh, this is a rare skin, and, and so on. You, you see how this works. However, we don't have them yet. We have to win them. And we do so by flipping those tiles. So we can flip five tiles. They're completely random. Like, they're always the same uh, of tile um, or cards available here, but they're placed randomly. So I have no, no real uh, decision-making here. I just click five random tiles, and this will flip up. Um, those colored numbers, which gives me attack points. So I have 10 plus 5 plus 2 is 17. And also fills up those um, thingies over here. So uh, now I have 5. And I didn't complete any of those, well, mini achievements or whatever, or combos, I guess. So what I can do now is press this button, which costs me 199 charts and will allow me to flip two more cards. So right now I couldn't get any of those because I have to pay this amount. So if I need one more uh, attack to at least get something. So let's do that. And this obviously increases dramatically the chance dramatically to get one of those combos. Okay, now I have th uh, three fives, which gives me another 70 attack power. And let's see if I get another combo. I got two more combos. Okay, that was a pretty good flip, actually. Uh, so I have 162, um, sorry, uh, 162 attack points now. And if I would pay another 199, I would get one more flip. Um, and I could do that as well. I don't have the shards now, though, so I can't do that. 
And now I can choose to spend those attack points on those cards. So I can't even get that fully caffeinated Xeotron uh, skin here, even though the loot box showed it to me. So I think this is even worse than a regular loot box system. Um, besides, okay, okay, the, the plus side is it's only cosmetics. That's good, but still a loot box system. Um, there's no player to win in this game, which is one issue. Loot boxes are a different issues, issue. Um, so it's good that it's not pay to win, but it's still loot boxes. Um, the other good thing about it is that you can't buy the loot boxes directly. There's no buy another loot box option, so that's good. But you can still uh, buy those shards, and the game really tempts you to do it, because it shows you this cool skin, um, and then it doesn't give it to you if you're not buying more shards. Uh, this is, I think this is, I, I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, I can't really judge, but it feels even more evil to me than a regular loot box already. Um, so, I don't know, not a fan of the system whatsoever. Let's let's buy something for the attack power I got here. Uh, this looks pretty cool, but I have a drone skin already. Um, um, I don't know, uh, I guess I could get this emote. Uh, doesn't really matter really. Let, let's let's just get I don't know this one and and those two emotes. Okay, um, done. So yeah, not a fan of the of the of the business model whatsoever. I'm I just hate loot boxes in general. I'm not gonna go in a big, big discussion here why. I just think they are heavily anti-consumer. Um, but. Uh, yeah, everyone has to make this decision for themselves. Obviously, everyone have to judge uh, this for themselves. This is just my opinion. I think this this uh, random. It, it's it's so ironic because the game focuses so heavily on not being random, and then we have a random uh, business model in here. It's just arg. Also, I'm not sure it's a good move to to make this game um, not free to play. Uh, I think going the battle right um, um, route with going uh, like pay to play during early access and then going uh, free to play on release would be a better option. The thing is, if you're not going free to play, free to play with a niche game like this, and this is a niche game, um, then you will have a problem with the player base, probably. Like, maybe not, we will see, but chances are you will have a problem with the player base. Going free to play solves that problem. And especially if you have a, a, an additional business model thingy um, built in already. So the game can make money while being free to play. So I'm not sure why that's not the goal in the first place, but I don't know. Not my decision to make. I'm just pointing it out here that this might be a problem in the future. So if you want to buy this game, make sure you check out the player base first. If you want to play it multiplayer, obviously. If you just want to go get it for the single player, then that's not an issue for you. Um, so uh, yeah, let's take a look at the option menu to, to finish up the video. Um, the option menu is as good as the UI. Um, it doesn't look great, but it has everything in it uh, that you want. So we have uh, texture quality options, which is an all you need for a 2D, 2D game, really. Resolution options, you can put in custom resolution. You can prevent window resizing for some reason. Um, you can, well, there's one thing miss missing. You can switch between to full screen and window, but no borderless window mode. Meh. Um, you can reduce the particles amount if you want to. You can cap the frame rate at whatever you want. No unlimited frame rate here, but I think 250 should be enough for everyone, so that's not an, not an issue. Uh, you can even disable animated skins if you if the skins of your if your opponent's skins annoy annoy you. So that's a good option. Then there are a bunch of interface options as well. You can change different multiple different things here as well, um, and uh, separate sound sliders. Key rebindings for all the keys. I always uh, at the beginning I thought you can only rebind those keys, which would be a pain, uh, which would be a little weird. But there's a hidden scroll bar over here, <laughs> which uh, shows you all the other hotkeys. UI is a little weird here, um, but yeah, you can rebind everything, and there are a lot of hotkeys, which is pretty good. And uh, then uh, you can change a few more things, like uh, going D and D uh, and disabling notifications when players follow you and stuff like that, so that's good. And then on top of that, there are streaming options. I've never thought this before, but basically the game allows you to set up the board in a way that it doesn't get blocked from by your face cam. So I can activate the top cam and then say it's it's this big and this wide, and that will arrange the units around the, top, the, the face cam. I can have double cams and I can activate green screen mode. I, I never saw this before. Uh, pr obviously not an important feature for most people, but um, multiplayer focused games 
usually depend a lot on their streamers. So yeah, why not make it a little easier for them to set up their streams? I mean, it's, it's a cool option. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was just surprised when I saw this, but it's a cool option. Okay, so yeah, the option menu, same as the UI, full of everything or not lacking much, but uh, it looks a little horrible and could, um, could uh, well, would would benefit of a redesign, I think. Um, get a get a UI designer on board here, please. That would help a lot. This just it does it just doesn't it. On top of being niche, it just doesn't look polished. It is polished. Like the game works very well. It has all the options. I didn't encounter any bugs. The AI is strong. Uh, it's very feature rich. It 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 is a polished game, but it doesn't look like one because like look at these buttons. Oh, okay, the, the highlighted effect is okay, but when they're not highlighted, there they look really bland. The whole UI is pretty clustered, uh, cluttered, and just doesn't look good. It just doesn't give a good feel, and will will put off a lot of people. I've, that's my fear anyway. Uh, anyway, if you are interested in the game, um, link is in the description below. I would recommend. Uh, to check it out on full release um, and not in early access if you're not super desperate to play it because a you can you have a better idea of the player base at that point and b the single player will be complete so I would recommend waiting for full release but uh, you can get it on in early access on the 8th of March if you want to um, links in the description below it's called Prismata I'm TH Pine thanks a lot for watching have fun and see you next time.